Hello, Princess. Hello, my love. How are you? Yes, I'm doing well. Uh, we've come back for another Talks with the Tucker session. Yes. And um, there's a very important uh, subject, you know, for us to go through in this session. Uh, again, you know, the last ser the last uh, session that we had, we were talking about uh, everything that's going on with the Diddy situation. Mm -hmm. And we were able to explore that subject a little bit. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to finish the... Christian and politics. Yes, the Christian and <laughs> the Christian and politics, yes. but we're not going to get to that today. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that for some of our viewers, they certainly want us to broach that subject again, and Lord willing, we certainly will get back to that. But there have been some recent developments taking place in the world that I think are very important for us to touch on, mm -hmm. and that is what's currently going on right now uh, with the strike with the um the the postman mm -hmm. uh, not talking about those who uh carry the mail mm -hmm. but specifically talking about those that deal with shipping lines and and things of that uh, nature and the workers that are specifically associated with that industry okay. and so uh, by god's grace we just want to bring out a few things because as we know as believers uh those that that study uh, Bible prophecy, we know that a lot of this pertains to the winding up of this earth's history. Mm -hmm. And especially with this being such a current event, I thought it would be very uh, advantageous for us to go through this subject. Okay. And so, uh, Lord willing, we're, we're going to uh, go over a few things. And by God's grace, this will be a savor of life into life. Uh, but before we begin, let's uh, pause and have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for another time and opportunity for us to be able to come together and to talk about these subjects that are so very important. We pray that your spirit be, may be with us and that this, again, will be a savor of life into life for those who hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so with this subject, I certainly don't want to, again, assume, just like with the Diddy situation, that everyone is aware of what is going on. Mm -hmm. Again, especially being here in the United States, especially for those that live in the U.S., we have a, a privilege that has been unfortunately greatly abused to the point, and, and this privilege is, is that as a result of this bubble, as it were, that we live in, mm -hmm. we tend to be very disconnected from what's happening in the, in the quote-unquote real world. Now, this situation that pertains to uh, the ports and the workers associated with it, this is something that is going to specifically affect every American. Mm -hmm. Now, again, for those who do not know, the workmen that deal with uh, shipping, uh, these workers are now currently on strike. So what's mm -hmm. currently going on, so for those who don't know, in order for us to get uh, so many of the goods that we love, such as our produce, uh, manufacturing, uh, things like cars, even down to the cell phones that we use, mm -hmm. All of these things come on very large cargo ships from different countries around the world, and they come into the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, the workers that deal with this particular industry, just like in the auto industry or any other you know, big-time industry, these workers help to facilitate this industry and to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, uh, these workers, just like in a lot of other industries, are not as compensated as they should be. Now, this subject has very many nuances to it, very many nuances, because I know uh, for some of our listeners who may be somewhat familiar with this uh, type of subject, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of trade unions may be immediately coming up in your mind. And we know what, you know, the spirit <laughs> of prophecy says yes. pertaining to trade unions. But again, this is a subject that is very, very nuanced. Very, very nuanced. Uh, so just, you know, giving the background again. So you have this industry, you have the cargo ships coming into the United States, and you have the workers that are responsible for making uh, those cargo ships a reality and coming into the U.S. and helping to facilitate the mass industries that we have here in the States. Mm -hmm. Now, the workers for this industry, their contract has run out. As a result of the contract running out is the reason why they are protesting because the in the um, the umbrella corporation essentially that is running all of this um, has not renewed the contract uh, of these workers. Now, these workers are under a trade union. They are under a trade union. 
And the trade union is organized to essentially compensate for the vested interests of the workers. Mm -hmm. So they are an official group, as it were, that represents the workers to these mass corporations for whatever industry it is, whether it's, you know, the shipping here, whether it's the auto industry, you know, whether it's, you know, the National Basketball Association. Mm -hmm. These trade unions are set up in order to represent uh, the workers in these industries. And the workers for the uh, shipping and, and, and all of that associated with it, with what's going on right now, uh, that union is trying to get the best deal for the workers. Now, again, this is a very nuanced, very, very nuanced subject, but it's very important for persons to understand. And we will eventually get to some statements in the spirit of prophecy, but it's very important for persons to realize that the whole reason why trade unions were established and organized was because there was so much um, exploitation of workers in the past. Yes. So I'm pretty sure that some of our listeners are familiar with men like John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan. Mm -hmm. uh, these men were ahead of very large industries like oil and steel, you know, J.P. Morgan with the banking. And it was even to the point, and again, Living in, especially in the 21st century, a lot of persons, because, you know, we've been conditioned to not study and to understand history, a lot of persons don't realize what working was like in the past. Yes. In the past, when you were to work for, you know, manufacturing or in or in warehouses and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you would literally be working like 60, 70 hours a week, getting paid I mean, minimum wage, they, they, I don't believe there was any minimum wage at that time to the point where you had things like child labor. I mean, people were dying in these places. And in order to start protecting the interests of the workers, these unions and trade unions were set up in order to protect the workers. So it was birthed out of a good desire, a birth out of a good desire. Now, as, you know, the Spirit of Prophecy mentions, you know, regarding uh, trade unions, and actually, I'll, I'll just read that. So, uh, this is in the book, Last Day Events, and for those that are not, may not be familiar with the book, Last Day Events, maybe some of our listeners, listeners are not Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. So, this is some counsel that God gave uh, in these last days, specific counsel regarding many of these things that would take place uh, here at the end of time. And this is in, again, the book, Last Day Events, page 116. And it says that Satan is busily at work in our crowded cities. He His work is to be seen in the confusion, the strife, and discord between labor and capital, and the hypocrisy that has come into the churches. It says the lust of the flesh, the pride of the eyes, the display of selfishness, the misuse of power, the cruelty, and the force used to cause men to unite with confederacies and unions binding themselves up in bundles for the burning of the great fires of the last days. All these are the working of satanic agencies. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to break this down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, in the beginning, it says, His work is to be seen in the confusion, the strife, and the discord between labor and capital. So the labor is talking about the workers and their mm -hmm. efforts to protect themselves, and capital, the big money men in these large corporations that are making all these profits, and their vested interests in this. Mm -hmm. So again, the trade unions were initially set up as a good thing to protect to protect the the rights of the workers, but unfortunately, just as we see in society and just in the human experience over the past six thousand years. Anytime you have a consolidation of wealth and power, uh, whether that be in the religious world, whether that be in entertainment, whether that be in, in, in politics, unfortunately, you're going to have an abuse of power. Mm -hmm. And even though these trade unions were initially set up as a good thing, there has been and will be even in, in a more extreme sense an abuse of power. You know, again, I believe we mentioned this before. It's just like uh, the famous phrase from Lord Acton, that power corrupts and absolute power, power corrupts. corrupts. Absolutely. And so, uh, sadly, these labor unions are going to use their influence in order to, um, as the Bible says, bring about a time of trouble. 
uh, such as never was. And I know that maybe some of our listeners have uh, family and friends who may be a part of some of these trade unions. And again, what they're fighting for are is legitimate. I mean, there's mass inflation, you know, that is in uh, in, in the United States and really around the world. You know, the cost of everything is through the roof. And because I, I was looking at a statistic and they were saying that these workers in the shipping, that on average, they're paid about $80,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Now, some person initially looking at that dollar figure <laughs> would say that, wow, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's amazing and so on and so decent. forth. That's pretty decent. decent. But when you think about one what the United States government is taking out just on taxes mm -hmm. from that paycheck. When you think about the cost of goods, that $80,000 is not really what it used to be. Because when you made $80,000 in 1965, that was a lot of money. I mean, because, you know, there was a time when making $100,000 a year was really reaching like one of the I mean, that was the American dream, um, not necessarily being a millionaire, but to be at the point where you're making six figures, because in the past, again, 30, 40, 50 years ago, when when you uh, crossed that one hundred thousand dollar threshold, mm -hmm. you were living a very, very comfortable life, very, very comfortable life. But unfortunately, that's that's not the, the the state of affairs anymore. You know, again, in the past, you know, making one hundred thousand dollars meant that you were upper middle class. Mm -hmm. But now, one hundred thousand dollars is is essentially just you know enough to keep you in the middle class. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I was gonna mention that um, the uh, from what I noticed as well was the complaints in regards to. Um, um, you can say AI to a to a certain okay. degree, and how much within these different industries, you know, people are pretty much getting booted out so that you know they can have more of this mm. technology fill to in, take over and yeah to yeah. take over you know the sphere yeah. of workers. Which I did see that. You know, I did see that. The complaint is you know. <laughs> You can use machines. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and machines don't have, you know, families to take care of yeah. and all of these other things. So um, that was the other thing was um, the concern for just being able to provide for yourself even more decently, which I guess since they were saying that during, you know, the COVID area, um, uh, era, yeah. era mm -hmm. thank you, um, during the COVID era, that you know they were considered to a degree essential work uh, workers as no, well. For sure, yeah. Um, you for know, sure. just like you know, healthcare, nursing, yeah. and things yeah. like that. Um, but I think in terms of how much probably people get paid within the nursing field and comparing to you know shipping course, and all these other things, course. there may be a bit of a disparity yeah. and things like that. But you know, overall, um. I mean, it's it is it is hard labor. Um, you know, there is a difference in no, cost sure. and, yeah. and things yeah. uh, that need to be taken into an account. Um, so it's just going to be interesting how these things are going to play out in light of the fact that you know because this specific industry is pretty much what holds our economy together from the aspect of trade and being able to have goods. I mean, if you, um, I remember, um, there was one statement, uh, I was looking at and it was basically whoever owns pretty much the sea, you know, technically, you know, yeah, owns, you the know world. Yeah, yeah. owns the world. And so yeah. when you're able to prevent people from receiving, you know, goods, um, that are essential, I mean, it really can, you know, have a, a hard impact on the economy, um, and on people's, you know, daily life, you know, no, and, I mean, and at, this happens yeah. in other areas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whether the whole Israel, you know, thing that was taking place and whatnot, but, sure. um, but yeah. So. No, I mean, it, it really is a good point because, 
Uh, yeah, it it's going to affect, and and again, it's it's part of the reason why we're even having this this you know this discussion and talk, is because of the effect that this can potentially have upon people. Hmm. You know, we're told in in inspiration that soon uh, the problem of buying and selling will become a very serious, serious one. one, a very very serious one. And obviously, this is what's happening right now with the with these uh, the shipping workers strike is not the mark of the beast itself. Mm -hmm. But this is an illustration of how um, how the practical everyday life of individuals can be hurt because of certain industries that are not functioning. And again, living in the United States, we don't really understand or appreciate how a nation functions. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we take so many things for granted, certainly because many of our minds are just so inundated with entertainment and television. It puts you in a mindset where you're constantly chasing the the high of dopamine releases that usually come through mediums of social media mm -hmm. and again in entertainment and sports and all of these other things. And as a result of that, the real practical things that pertain to living everyday life become secondary to chasing that dopamine high. Yeah. And unfortunately, it lends itself to these realities because, again, I'm pretty sure many, there's many of us as Americans that could care less about the well-being of the workers. It's just like, you all need to get back to work so that, you know, I don't have to worry about goods and services so that I can have, you know, enough, you know, food for Thanksgiving, you know, mm -hmm. enough, you know, enough... Um, so I can get and, my TVs and, and so my, I get my television for Black Friday and, 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 and all of these things. My game set. And my game says I can get all the presents for Christmas and all of this. And so on one front, it again, God is permitting things like this to happen in order to wake up the social consciousness of individuals so that we can be forced to start thinking about things that really, really matter. Hmm. And things like this should be considered as such. You know, this is not just happening by happenstance. Every time that there's a crisis in any sector of life, it is an opportunity that God is providing in order to wake up the minds of men. Mm. And I pray that persons really understand the the reality of this for what it really is. And again, even on a practical point, we're going to get back to some of the spiritual aspects, but even mm -hmm. on a practical point, again... We have been counseled, especially for those of us who are Sunni Adventists who have a knowledge of the spirit of prophecy, what, you know, Bible prophecy talks about in the books of Daniel and Revelation. But even for some of our passive li listeners who may not be Adventists, you may not even be a Christian, but you see these things happening. Um, this is a call to live very practically. Um, as we see all throughout the, the tenure of, of the Word of God, the righteous have always... Uh, sought to live a life of independence in the sense that they were able to grow their own food. They were not dependent upon a governmental body in order to live life and, and things like that. They were independent enough that if some type of crisis were to happen, they would be able to survive and to succeed. Grow their own food. Grow their own food. You know, no. it's just like with... um. Uh, with Joseph. Mm -hmm. Again, yes, Joseph was technically in Egypt, but the only reason why Egypt was able to survive during that seven years of, of extreme famine was because of the uh, because of the instrumentality of Joseph. Mm -hmm. Because of his spiritual connection with God, that was able to bless Egypt on a practical level in the sense that they were able to um, weather out that seven year of famine storm. And so at this time, if, you know, again, for the, for those of our listeners, if you have not attempted to grow food, and I know that, you know, we're essentially at the end of the growing season, yes. but if you have never thought about growing your own food, I hope that this is a wake up call to that. Because again, I know that persons are, are praying that this strike end over end in a couple days that you know we'll wake up tomorrow morning and you'll find out that they made some you know type of multi-billion dollar contract with the workers and all of these things mm -hmm. but if this extends a week two weeks three weeks a, a month. month two months three months into christmas into the new year america's going to feel the pinch of this reality Many people around the yeah. world, you know, experience, you know, these things exactly. in general. And I was looking at one, I think, um, 
uh, commentator, he was basically saying that technically one almost a week going a week of of strike or in, inhibiting the the process of goods coming in and and out. Um, they were saying that you know that could be equated to like a month of being yeah. you know backed up, backed and, up, yeah. yeah, and not being able to you know produce and do things. So it could definitely have a, a big long lasting, uh, yeah. And then that even <laughs> changes the amount of how much you know yeah. food it can go up uh, quite a, a lot, almost three, maybe even five, you know, times as much. Yeah. Um, the inflation yeah. and I mean, because they're even saying as well that if this were to last months, that it would spiral the U.S. economy into a recession. Now, they were mentioning that every day that this uh, strike goes, this has the potential of of hurting the U.S. economy by three to four billion dollars a day. Hmm. Three to four billion dollars a day on top of the debt, debt that we yeah. on on top of, you know, the 34, I believe, trillion dollars mm -hmm. in debt that we have. It's hurting that much. Now, mind you, the, the United States uh, GDP or gross domestic product every year, I believe, is about 24 trillion, 23, 24 trillion. So, mind you, if you're racking up a billion, you know, three to four billion dollars a, uh, a day, uh, that's going to be substantial over the course of a possible month, two months, three months, four months, God forbid. And so again, you know, upon that practical point, if you have never thought about growing your own food, I hope that this is a wake up call that very soon, and not just with this situation, but certainly when this crisis initially breaks, mm -hmm. it is going to be impossible to rely anymore upon Walmart and Kroger's and Whole Foods and, and whatever Play, you know, supermarket you have, Myers, wherever you are, you know, around around, you know, the United States, especially, you're not going to be able to depend upon these mechanisms anymore for sustenance. You know, even though by the grace of God, I mean, we're doing a lot of ministry and traveling and, and doing things like that. We still try to grow food. I mean, we we grew a decent amount of uh, tomatoes. Uh, we grew potatoes. We have sweet potatoes that are still in the ground. You know, mm -hmm. Lord willing, we're going to uh, harvest hopefully a good amount of that uh, very soon. Peaches. Peaches, and you know, pears. And, and also as well, one of the blessings of living in the country is having good neighbors. So having good neighbors and seeking to reach out to them, be a blessing minister on a spiritual level as well, um, we've been able to reap the benefits of having neighbors who have been growing food. So we've gotten tomatoes from neighbor from neighbors, white peaches, some of the sweetest peaches we've ever tasted. <laughs> it was good. Really you know, good. Yeah, you know, coming from our neighbors. And so, you know, we've been able to freeze a lot of that. I mean, we have a lot of frozen peaches in the freezer as a result of, you know, having these good neighbors. And so... Brothers and sisters, even on that practical note, mm -hmm. God is, is seeking to use this as a wake-up call because I certainly don't have any insider information as to how long this track is going to last. Mm -hmm. But just in light of the scope of this, I I highly doubt that it's going to be over necessarily soon. Um, this may be, again, just like COVID, because with COVID, because I know that we all remember when, when COVID first happened, you know, early 2020, I was under the impression, I'm pretty sure like a lot of people that these lockdowns, whatever may have you, that this stuff, that this was maybe going to run a, maybe a, a week, two weeks. No one, well, certainly there were those that did, but as far as us as common people, mm -hmm. we didn't have a sense as to how long this would last. Yeah. And so this is why it is it's not in a crisis that that's time to prepare to, you know, to be prepared for that time. The preparation should have happened long before the crisis even came so that you would have been preparing just in case something were to happen. Mm. And and it's and what's, you know, so insane about things like this is that there will be persons that will still scoff that have heard of last day events and 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 all of these prophecies and and all the counsel regarding you know what's happening right now there will be people who will still scoff and try to act like this is not a big deal mm -hmm. these things always happen um but from the testimony of history and, and what we know from uh, the word of god uh these things are not normal these are uh are the birth pains as it were that we read about in in Matthew chapter 24 so I have a question for you. Yes. Do you do you think that in light of just the the 
how intense things have happened mm-hmm. thus far. Because, I mean, just think about it. You know, there's been a hurricane. It's had, you know, yeah. I mean, people are yeah. still feeling the devastating effects of it. And it was it. devastating for sure. And, you know, at first I thought when I was seeing um, posts in regards to the ports, I thought it was because of, oh, because the, of the storm. Hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, okay, no, this has to do mm. with, uh, with yeah. uh, workers' compensation. But um, in light of just where people's minds are outside of, unfortunately, the social consciousness of just being entertained most of the time through social media. Mm -hmm. But just the, and even entertainment within politics, because we know that, you know, that's on everybody's mind. So in light of the buildup for Mm. this 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 seems like a perfect storm, <laughs> right, right? A perfect hurricane, <laughs> worker strikes, well, presidential election. And I saw this one video where, and again, Diddy. <laughs> it's not just Diddy. It's all the. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. almost every field of sports. They have documentaries yeah. out now. Every yeah. field. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's it's uh, crazy. I, it's crazy. So it's like. Uh, I I was watching one video and it was sharing in regards to I think uh, one reporter was asking Biden if he was going to interject mm. in this situation with yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah, I uh, with yeah. uh, with the worker strike yeah. and he said no yeah. <laughs> pretty much yeah. so do you think all of this is to be a climax to just I mean I I really don't know I mean we can you know. Yeah. hypothesize of what can turn out you know from the election but in terms of just the climactic event of all these things coming and literally in a month a little over a month there's going to be you know um an election an election so that is that is a very very good question um i'll i'll, I'll i will attempt to answer it from this wise so there was I don't remember this gentleman's name, and I'm pretty sure when I mention this, uh, maybe the video will come back to people's minds. But I believe it was during the COVID, you know, epoch. Uh, there was a gentleman. Um, I don't remember what sector of the government. Um, he might have been a Democratic politician or something to that effect. But he was mentioning how it's it's always important to never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. And then he tried to clarify himself by saying in the sense that you're able to do things, you know, as a result of a (laughs) crisis that you could not do by default if that crisis wasn't there. And so, you know, even very quickly. And I don't even have to turn to it, but, you know, just for the sake of um, of point. So this is, again, in the. In the book of First Timothy, mm-hmm. and I believe we might have read this before, uh, First Timothy chapter six. Again, notice what the Bible says. Uh, First Timothy chapter six and verse ten. It says, "For the love of money is the root of all evil." Mm. Read it again. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the p- faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Mm. It cannot be overstated the influence that financial gain has in these matters. Again, whether it be in these worker strikes, in these sometimes even seeming natural disasters, and we don't have time to get into geoengineering, um, and the presidential election, and 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 you know Diddy, and, and all of these things. People don't realize how much money influences these realities. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, for the sake of this context, and this plays in uh, very well, uh, this is James, the book of James. James chapter 5. Some of our listeners may know where I'm going with this. James chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Mm. So the context of this, God is prophesying about rich men. Now, again, 
there have been rich men all throughout the annals of history. So this is not a new phenomenon, having very wealthy people in the up, upper echelons of society. But at the end of verse 3, it specifically says the last days. Mm -hmm. The last days weren't 2,000 years ago. The last days weren't 500 years ago. The last days are now. Mm -hmm. So God was saying very clearly that these hyper-wealthy men are seeking strategically to keep up treasure together mm -hmm. for the last days. Mm -hmm. And all of these industries, these wicked men, unfortunately, are seeking to use their money, power, and influence in order to um, consolidate that reality to gain more control than they even have now. And again, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, no. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, persons don't realize, and especially with the advent of social media, it's, it's this understanding can be more clearly seen. Mm -hmm. Many of these leaders in all of these sectors of society, again, politics, um, uh, business, entertainment, whatever area, the religious world, Many, if not the vast majority of the men leading out in these industries are in direct contact with satanic agencies. Mm -hmm. It is now coming out and you're seeing it on social media where you're getting pictures of, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, who's a Freemason. I mean, you're getting, you know, pictures of even in the past, you know, finding pictures of George Washington, America's first president in Masonic, reg uh, Mas Masonic regalia. It's becoming very evident that these men are doing very nefarious things behind closed doors, which means very clearly, as the Bible tells us, these men are in association and connection with Satan. Mm -hmm. What that means is that, mind you, the Bible tells us very clearly in Revelation chapter 12 that Satan knows that he has but a short time. Mm -hmm. Those men in this world that are leading out in these industries whom Satan has exalted in this world, he is telling them also as well that there is a, but a short time in this world. Hence the reason why what we see in James chapter 5, because he under, Satan understands that his time is short, he's telling his followers that time is short. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, he's encouraging them to bind up their resources in order to prepare for the reality of the fact that time is soon to be no more. And unfortunately, mm. that reality is influencing what we see in the world today. Like even, you know, investing in leaving the earth and, and leaving the, the earth, earth and, and, and all of these trying things. To habitate another planet. Um isn't there a verse in uh, Revelation uh, 18 in regards to rich men and uh, using the sh uh, getting rich off of the pretty much you can s make okay. this symbolism? I think it's like Revelation 18. Revelation 18 talking about Babylon and uh, yes, yeah, so let's read that. Let's read that. I think it was. Um, I mean, because it's was, true. It was on the the, yeah. docu uh, the documentary or whatnot. Yeah. But it said specifically ships, and just to see that. Yeah. Even to specifically talk about. It's a good point. Uh, very very good point. The sea and just using that as a means to get because I mean just think about how much money they are making. Yeah. How much money Amazon Babylon is. And yeah. All these yeah. other different companies. Um, but anyways, yeah. No, yeah, it's it's a very good point. Um, because I mean the market cap of these corporations is in the trillions you know apple's market cap if i'm not mistaken is about 2.3 2.5 trillion dollars mm. trillion with a t not a b <laughs> but trillion with a t yes okay so yes revelation 18 talking about babylon verse 9 it says just uh, jumping down it says and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and, and scarlet and all uh, thion wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of precious, most precious wood 
and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. Mm. So the Bible makes it very clear that Babylon is is literally at the head of all of these major industries around the world that make the world to function. Mm -hmm. And again, Satan is trying to set up this state of things as we read in Revelation chapter 13 to orchestrate events to ensure that no man will be able to buy or sell unless he has the mark of the beast. And just listening to that, you know, it really goes to show the character of God when someone's actuated. I mean, sorry, the character of Satan when someone's actuated uh, by Satan, but also the character of God when you brought up the example of, you know, Joseph, because when, you know, Joseph was put in that, God put him in that position to help solve a problem that was going to affect the world at that time. Yeah. And instead of hoarding it to himself to engrandize himself Mm -hmm. or, you know, I guess you could say them as a government, they were able to be in position to help those who were in need. Yeah. So when they came, they were able to, to assist in that way. And you don't see the same mm-hmm. dynamics. You see the rich getting richer and, and the poor, and the getting, poor getting poorer. Poor. And yeah. if you don't have, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, that's that's not that's not our fault. And you know, it's very interesting on that point with Joseph because that grain that they were giving away in Egypt during the seven years of famine, they weren't giving it away as a charity. It, yeah. You had to buy it. Yeah. So even in a crisis, there's nothing wrong with making money. But the cost of the grain w- wasn't exorbitant prices, yes. you know, because by the grace of God, Joseph was at the head of that financial enterprise. There was an extortion being practiced. Yes. You know, there there weren't all of these things taking place, as you mentioned, to just arbitrarily enrich the hierarchy of Egypt. Well, as long as as Joseph was there. Mm-hmm. And so it, it just shows you it very, very much so to the point that you mentioned that even in these crises, you see the difference between God's character and mm-hmm. between and between Satan's character. And even on a point as well, um, I didn't mention this, you know, when the uh, when we started that. Again, as we read in last day events, you have this conflict between uh, labor and capital. Mm -hmm. And so we read a little bit how the uh, how Satan is going to use the labor unions. But again, the labor unions are merely a reaction to the arbitrary control of capital or these big money businesses. Mm -hmm. And so. As we see a lot of times in human history, you have people that are using their influence to enact things that are hard and arbitrary and satanic and all of this, and as a means to compensate for all of this arbitrary action, you have a reaction Mm -hmm. that's supposed to counteract all the bad stuff, but unfortunately, even the efforts to counteract the bad stuff tend to be co-opted by Satan. And so... I wanted to read from the book Education, and again, for those of our listeners who may not be familiar with this volume, powerful book, very, very powerful volume, written in 1905, notice this. It says, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, such as Amazon, Tesla, uh, Facebook, um, uh, Alphabet, that's Google's parent company. Uh, The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many, the combinations of the poor classes for the defense of their interests and claims. So that's the labor unions, Mm -hmm. the spirit of unrest, of riot and bloodshed. Do we see that today? You see it today. The worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution. Mm. All are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to to that which convulsed France. So again, to the (laughs) question that you asked, it's literally a perfect storm for Satan. Mm -hmm. So Satan has the centralizing of wealth and power with all of these ruling elites. He has them dominate the poor classes, us as common people. And then he has us as common people stand up for the defense of our interests and claims. 
But instead of standing up for the defense of our interests and claims in righteousness, because there's a place to do that. Butcher and... Exactly. <laughs> instead of standing up for our defense, you know, in, in, in righteousness, we do it with the same satanic zeal of our persecutors. And then as a result of that, you have this clash of the rich and the poor. And then on top of that, as this said, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution. So the morality governing society during these epochs, again, is the morality of the French Revolution, which was hardcore atheism, mm -hmm. you know, sexual liberation, um, inclusion, the same reality that we have today essentially moral relativism yeah. where there is no right there is no wrong do everything based on your feelings and and when you have this perfect storm in society as it was in the french revolution the goddess of reason will be enthroned as as the deity and for those who don't know who the goddess of reason is the goddess of reason is that big old statue that you see in Ellis Island in New York. The Statue of the sta Liberty? Yes, the Statue <gasps> of Liberty really? is the goddess of reason. And a lot of people don't, don't realize this, that France was the one that donated the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. to the United States. So when, because, again, we think that the Statue of Liberty is holding up a flame of liberty, but that's really Satan holding up the hellish torch of false prophecy. Literally, when you go to the foundation stone mm -hmm. of the Statue of Liberty, it says that it was laid Masonically, and it has a Freemason symbol on the foundation stone of the Statue of Liberty. And for those who understand the nature of the occult, when they say that the Statue of Liberty is supposed to be a symbol of the triumph of light over darkness, that light is not the light of God, but it's talking about Lucifer's light and his triumph over over uh, over Adonai, which occultists attribute with the devil. It, it's little. It's so satanic. It's calling good evil and evil exactly. Good and just, it's just just like what we see in Isaiah chapter five. Yes. Woe unto them that call light darkness, that mm -hmm. put uh, sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet, and all of these things. And so. This is the morality that is governing society where Satan is now openly manifesting himself uh, to the point where there's so much mass confusion. So, and again, just getting to the point, the reason why Satan wants this massive confusion is because from his perspective, it's much easier to control the masses. And it just dawned on me as, you know, you're you're just talking like, Outside of it just being a perfect storm, you know, Satan has really perfectly controlled the masses to the point where when it's just the fact that we don't realize how much we, the way our brains are being formulated. We're being conditioned very heavily. Conditioned. Very, it's very like heavily. just not realizing how much it's intentional to get this reaction and how much we, we, you know, during that time, just to imagine that people will not have the, like, just think, uh, sorry, I know I didn't finish my statement, but just as a precursor, you think of how with all this social engineering, yeah. You call it social, but it's making people antisocial. Yeah. And so when we have social problems, instead of dealing it in a social way, we're so conditioned to handle things in the way we're being socialized. So, yeah. for example, if I'm used to shooting people on a video game because it's so convenient, real life. if I'm watching all this content of, you know killing and or it's, and, it, and it's insane I'm not even to cut you off the the movies today don't leave anything to the imagination no, i mean like it's it's perfect like you can't nothing is left they will literally show you the bullet flying through the person's brain and the blood splattering they will show it in every detail and in our minds we won't look at that and say 
like or cringe yeah. or anything like that. Because just imagine if you were literally in that room, crazy. If you were in that crazy. room and you saw that exact same person literally get their brains blown out, mm. you would Lord not be mercy. sitting in your chair as you're watching that TV. Yeah. You would not be sitting in that chair watching that TV like, okay, this is entertaining. Yeah. If that literally happened in your presence. There will be some type of you would hope some type it's of trepidation reaction. Yeah, yeah, and and that's why I'm saying it's perfectly put together so that as you were saying, like the French Revolution, it's not going to be surprising seeing people get so angry to or or so or feel like they've been so deceived, you know, so frustrated, and just the the All of atmosphere these passions are just the, going to it, burst. It's just going to burst on you know. Yeah. On everyone, they were. I was even watching one video, and not in a, in the sense that it was kind of similar to the purge, but it was referencing to to, it's, to Trump. But but anyways, even if you were to have that time period, just to imagine the minds of people, I mean, we really don't know what we're in for. People really yeah. don't know what they're in for and what side you can possibly be depending on the habits and the character you're developing right now. It's true. It's scary. No, I mean, it, it really, really is. And and this subject could be broached so much more, so much more. I would actually um, direct our viewers. There was a message that um, we did. Now, this is from a couple of years ago. So some of the things are not as revel relevant. Well, not necessarily relevant, but as up to date mm. in the video. But it was a sermon called uh, Down in the Pit. Um, we yes, did it in 2022. Um, so uh, it's in the archives on our uh, YouTube channel, Glad Tiny Studio. You can go on it, uh, click on uh, videos and just scroll down to 2022. Uh, you'll see it. It's called Down in the Pit. And so it goes into some more of these details of the reality and influence of the societal debauchery and its strategic development, you know, by say, in, or, in order to accomplish a certain end. But uh, yes, we, we, we just, <coughs> pardon, just wanted to jump on mm -hmm. and to <coughs> need a little bit of water. Excuse well, me moment. I'll make a quick interject. I also want to mention, and I, I don't want it to, you know, especially as, you know, we're awakening in our own minds and in the minds of others, the mm -hmm. importance of being ready for what's coming. But ultimately, this is why it's so important that we have a relationship with the Lord and that we really take time. That's fundamental. To, I mean, it is fundamental. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we're not, no, you know, we're, not. Saying, yeah. we're not saying that, but just so that nobody gets this confused. Yeah. <laughs> the seriousness of these things happening and just looking at history and different places and the minds of where people were at when things seemed like everything was going normal and everything was okay. Yeah. And just in a matter of moments, of moments, everything changes. You could literally get your whole family butchered. <laughs> you yeah. know, you could literally, you know, be poor or i mean lose what, everything lose everything like yeah so it's like we really and that's a, a very good pivotal point we really have to be in a position that by god's grace the lord can look to us as his servants and say i know that by by god by my grace they're not going yeah. to forsake me you know even though they lose everything and and just really having that connection with God to just yeah. be able to, in, you know, endure, you know, trial and hardship and, and to know that all these things that we may be going through now, um, whether little mm -hmm. or, you know, a little not so great, you know, uh, situations that we really see them for what they are yeah. and because there's going to be a time where you're not we're not going to have this time back. No, we're not. And it's and it's something that, um, you know, the Lord will put in my mind to mention a lot when we would have conversations mm -hmm. that the times that we have right now and, and, and we all have our different trials and things like that. But especially for those of us who have the privilege of living in the United States and kind of Western society mm -hmm. as a whole, there is a decent amount of, again, peace that we've been able to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that we have been seeking to take advantage of the of this time as much as we possibly can, because to that point, 
the time is going to to come where the pressure is not going to lift off. You know, COVID happened and some of that pressure has been lifted. You know, we're not necessarily under lockdowns, yeah. you know, you know the way they were uh, d- during that time. And so the pressure has been lifted by the grace of God, not for us to, to sink back into a spiritual no. lethargy. No, not at all. And just want things to go back to normal. That was just a simulator. Exactly. You know, it, it was a trial run to really be as as, as a test. And I pray that by God's grace, even with, again, with this uh, worker strike, what, you know, the 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 theme of, of this whole uh, particular session, that we don't see this merely as just something passively happening, but that we will see these types of situations mm. as God trying to get our attention, mm. because very soon... Things are going to be happening so grave and and that they won't merely be getting our attention, but specifically deciding our eternal destiny. And again, during Noah's time, that 120 years that he was building and preaching, I'm pretty sure that there were a myriad of things that were providentially happening in society Mm -hmm. that God was using to try to tell the antediluvian minds at that time that this is literally going to happen. You all need to wake up. Take Noah's message seriously and stop playing around. Mm. But they didn't take it seriously. And then not taking it seriously didn't not make the flood not come. Yeah, and true. so Satan will try to make us believe that if we just don't take it seriously, then us not paying any attention to it will make it not come. But that's that's not how things work. Uh, And again, just like in the French Revolution, uh, during France, during that time, you know, and and we'll kind of end end on some of these points. When you read the history, the French monarchy, the papal hierarchy saw a revolution coming. Hmm. They saw the degradation of the government, but they didn't care. Their only focus and goal was to aggrandize themselves. They didn't care that the common people were suffering. They saw the handwriting on the wall Mm. symbolically, but they did not care. The Jeff Bezos's, the Elon Musk, the Mark Zuckerberg's, these men see the handwriting on the wall, but they're such slaves to the flesh. Um, uh, Pope Francis, the Jesuit organization, all of these mechanisms, they're such slaves to their flesh that they don't care that these things are happening, but even to that point, it's not going to stop this deluge that is coming. Yeah. The guillotine is waiting, and it's and and certainly we you know we don't well, want that, like people uh, to to misconstrue you know what was just mentioned as far as uh, the guillotine. This is not to leave the impression that we're calling for the killing or death of any person. No, no. Just... Um, but it is a point to be mentioned that history will be repeated. And again, this is even with the preface. God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to repentance. Mm. But there are real world consequences for the decisions we make. Mm. And God is, is, is desperately trying to get the attention of the minds of men. And again, mm. there's so much more that can be said on this subject. Um, but I pray that by God's grace, even just this little dialogue has been able to give some type of focus and direction um, as to see this um, more so from God's perspective, you know, what he's trying to accomplish, you know, through through all of this, um, some practical things for us to really seek to implement in light of seeing this this type of reality, because Lord willing, by God's, you know, by God's grace and even God forbid, if something like this were to happen next year, mm-hmm. hopefully, Lord willing, because we'll be of ready. us. Again, you know, watching maybe a platform like this or or some other mechanism, by God's grace, when this next growing season comes in 2025, we can be growing some food. So if in the fall something catastrophic, you know, happen or whatever the case may be, we will be prepared, not only spiritually, because mm-hmm. certainly we understand that the That's spiritual essential. preparation is fundamental, but at the same time, there is a great temporal, practical preparation that is also needed. 
So uh, we just want to thank our audience again so much yes. for uh, for joining us. Thank you for being here. You know, Lord willing, uh, we do want to finish the Christian in politics. You know, there may be something else that comes up that we feel as though that we need to that we need to talk about. Uh, but uh, by God's grace, uh, Lord, will seek to, to to tackle that as it as it presents itself. Before you pray, you know, as uh, we were having this uh, conversation, I was uh, thinking about uh, General Cargo. Oh, okay. Um, okay. No, yeah, that's um. <laughs> may, maybe we'll have some time to talk about um uh, our, our our dear brother some some other time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say. Oh well. I know it didn't have to do with shipping per se, yeah. but the book as a whole was definitely a uh, no, no, blessing. sure, sure, no. But I'm pretty sure we'll certainly reference that reference that exactly. another time. No, yeah, but uh, but let's have a word of prayer. Okay. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for uh, this time to be able to talk about some of these uh, points and principles. I pray, dear Lord, that what was communicated um, mm -hmm. will have made sense. That these things can be systematically understood. Lord, for there is a uh, great work that needs to be done. And I pray that this will not be lost sight uh, upon our minds. And something mm -hmm. I did want to mention that as we see all of this happening, this should urge us even more so to be reaching out to our neighbors, to friends and family, those that do not know this message, yes. doing everything that we can to share the line of truth with those who do not know. And we just pray that you would keep us until we come back next time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.